So, okay, um, now that you said it, I realized that the title of my presentation is a bit um, overhyped, but it's a great topic, I think, really. So I, I couldn't help myself. I had to use this really cool animation, unleash the power of your comments. Um, and this really is, uh, I want to provide something for everyone, if, even if you're a beginner or if you're a long-term Rust user, I want to show some tricks everyone can use uh, for the projects. So first of all, a quick uh, note, we probably all know that comments are very important. And uh, this is a very bad example of a comment because comments should add value. I'm saying this because I'm going to ignore that today because you can't teach comments by writing good comments or yeah, you can, but you can't teach about Rustock by only writing good comments or I would have not enough time. So why would someone talk about comments at all? I am the first to rant about it if it's missing. <laughs> Um, it, it's so important and uh, in my daily work I have to do with a lot of really old projects. Uh, just today I discovered a dependency on a 2012 version of a library. So uh, comments helped me a lot and I miss them a lot too in those old projects. But at the same time I struggle with them. Good comments are really hard to do. And with Rust, it's always the ecosystem that gets the language even at one level up. So that, that's really important for Rust, I think, that you not only look at the language, but what's already there to help you build your things. Because in other languages, it's just commenting was kind of an add-on. And uh, for example, in PHP, you have various commenting system and there's some standard stuff, but uh, every team does it a bit different. So it's great to see it's built in and you can rely on it. And I love reading a good documentation. I have a tip about one at the end of my talk. Okay, so I have prepared some code, well, rather documentation. Um, I've prepared a workspace here and um, this will be uploaded to GitHub so you can look at it uh, in your own time if you want to dive deeper into it. And let's just start with a really simple Rust talk comment. My font is so big, I can't fit the lines. Um, you see here uh, we have in the first line, we have two slashes. That's a classic comment. That's a comment you can just write anywhere at Rustock. Doesn't interact with it at all. And if you use three slashes, then you have a Rust a Rustock comment. And this is attached to the main function. Now this is great and all. I have my comments here, but what really makes it just that much better is that you get. Uh, Rust doc. When you install Cargo or the Rust default uh, setup from Rust up, you get Rust doc. And I'm using Cargo uh, for this demo, but you could just use Rust doc. So I'm going to execute Cargo doc with the open parameter that builds the documentation and opens it in my default browser. I'm going to start a loop here, so it's just built in the background from now on. And all of this I get for free. I don't have to do anything to get this besides writing this one comment. I get my crates, I get a list of functions, um, I get some navigation, some pages, I even get a search. And this is a part of what makes Rustock so great because you don't have to think about um, the next step, what libraries do I need to use to get a nice documentation? And yeah, so that was one of the points where I was like, whoa, this is just great. And it also explains why all the documentation of, uh, of the online Rust 
the stuff is so great because you get so much help building it. Okay, this was just a really quick introduction. Those um, grades I built here um, built upon uh, the one that came before. So I introduced a change in every one of those steps. The next uh, thing I added was um, documentation for a module I'm writing. Um, in this case, it's named MyMod. And here's something special. Because uh, Rustdoc can, can see if you are using the three slashes or the two slashes with the exclamation point. And this is a top level comment. And you'll see what I mean when I build it and open it in Rust doc. Top level comments are well on the top level of something. So you can provide a really quick overview over what's happening in this module um, in a main view of your grade. So users of your API can quickly um, see what's going on in there. And jumping really quick, I'm way quicker than I thought, uh, into the next one, um, I added a top level comment to the main.rs. And this is really cool. This is, is a comment for my whole grade. So I can write an extensive comment about what this grade tries to accomplish, what, um, what a user should be wary of, or something else important. And you, could, uh, you can place it at the top of your documentation. And uh, you don't need to um, clutter up some different files or include something. But you can. I'm going to show you how later. Oh, I don't think I do because it was not well we see um i will talk about advanced features okay so so far so good we have some great uh, level comments module level comments function uh, level comments and here's something really clever i guess you can guess it from the great name this is all just markdown and i didn't know i wanted this until I use this. Because sometimes in documentation, you need to emphasize. And it's easy to emphasize with Markdown. And we have some more benefits I will show later. So I think at this point alone, it's amazing what Rustdoc can do for you. It's really easy. It's really in the programming flow. You don't have to think a lot and you get a really nice documentation out of it. Um, now, if you are a maintainer of some library or you are a draconian product manager or something, I don't know, um, you can control a bit what, uh, what you expect from the Rust doc system. So for example, with this, um, it's called lint, I think. You can just crash Rust doc when there's missing documentation. So everything, when you do this, everything in your code needs to be documented. Um, now, in real world situations, you would probably, probably just warn about it. So you can just, um, just that like you could uh, just any other warnings for example about uh, you, you can get a warning about uh, function names that have a big letter at the beginning capital letter and in the same way you can control rust talk yeah so i'm going to show you how that looks in the browser because again it's all just marked down and that means those are nice code blocks, which are, I don't know if you can see the stream, but they have a light gray background. So you can write code blocks in here. 
in your documentation, which is great. And that leads perfectly to the next uh, step. We have some code samples we can put into the code. And let's jump into my mode here. So here you, you can already see um, Visual Studio Code is uh, telling you me to run doc test here. I'm going to show you what this student does in a moment. When you put examples into Rust doc uh, comments, you can just use the markdown syntax you are familiar with, and then you just write Rust code. So you can show uh, a user how to use your function, right? And for short functions, you can just make a doc test out, out of it. So I just said, I said equal, the value and one, two, three. By the way, I'm just uh, taking a string into here and making an unsigned, intent, unsigned integer here uh, for a nice test. And I don't know if this code can run it. Let's see. No, it does not want to run it. Uh, I think I know what is the problem. Um, doc. Now, wait a second. So, test. Okay, so um, I can, with a familiar cargo test command, which I can use for my uh, other tests I've set up, I can just add the parameter doc. And when I run this, uh, yeah, great. So one downside is it only works with, with libraries. I think I can, uh, I have to say I want the lab, right. Um, oh, great. Now that's working out great. Okay, so you can just run doc tests. And I, I had this working, I swear. <laughs> No, I, that's not going anywhere productive. Sorry about that, um, but they do work for libraries. Um, wait a second, did I? No, I didn't include it. Maybe that's the problem. Cargo doc. Ah, it works, right. So that's what's the problem. The workspace wasn't aware of the package. And you can see it ran one test in my mod RS. And it passed. Ooh, cool. And you can, for libraries, even say that every public API needs to have a doc test or at least a code example. So that's another great way you can ensure the documentation of your project is up to your standards. And this integrates with the whole um, test suites. Um, um, let's see, I built this, I didn't, I'm going to start the loop again, so I documented a bit about uh, doc tests in, in my documentation of this crate. Um, doc tests are a bit weird, you can only use it for public methods and as you have seen only for libraries. And Um, there are some feature discrepancies with Rust doc and Cargo doc. You should uh, try out what uh, works better for you. I decided to fall back to Cargo doc because it has a lot of features. And in my humble opinion, you should not use this test whole modules. You should not use it to have a complex setup. Um, it's great for the things. Um, where you have a one-liner or two-liner uh, for some documentation and you can just make a quick test out of it. And to make this even better in your documentation, there's a nice little trick. Um, as you can see here, in front of uh, the assignment of input, I've uh, added a hashtag. Sorry, I, I know it's not originally hashtag. I don't remember what it was before. So 
I added the hashtag here and be, uh, before I said equal. This may look a bit messy at this point, but if we build this and hop over into the browser, and then I'm going to my mod and I'm, this is the documentation now for this function. Oh no, not for this one. Uh, that's the wrong file. Great. I'm a bit stressed today. I'm so sorry, guys. Okay, here we are. So as you can see, uh, Rustdoc only takes the lines without the hashtags at the beginning into the code examples. So this is really great um, because you can use a variable to say, hmm, this should be some input by a user or you should give me a hash at this point. So you can use a variable name at here to say what you expect. And your code can still be just run as a doc test. Um, but the user here doesn't have to worry about some assert in, in their code example because they don't care about your doc tests at this point. Right, so I'm going to slow down a bit now. Um, I'm going to jump into the last trade here. I have some more content on my slides. Um, but this was, I, I really wanted to show this because it's powerful. Um, we have, uh, again, we have Markdown and Markdown knows links and I of course can set um, hyperlinks to anywhere. But Rustock also has a special syntax for internal links. So in this case, I should, this function should be, um, should have a lowercase f at the beginning, uh, but I decided I need to have this big F. Um, now, uh, let's see. Yeah, so here a normal link is um, a, just a link. And this automatically links to the symbol named links, which is the module links I should have thought about the naming a bit better. Um, but you can, as you can see uh, up here, uh, if you just write my mod, it links to my mod. And let me jump back into here. You can see down here that this just works. You don't have to think about if you are um, linking to a module, a function or anything else. But if you have to think about it, you can. You can say, this is a struct, this is a function. And uh, sometimes it happens that in one crate, um, a name is used twice. So that's a great way to link to the correct item. Cool, so now that I run through all my crates, um, I wanna showcase a search function again because it's really great that I get this for free. I, I'm amazed, uh, <laughs> I even get some, if you're a dark mode user, you can also do that. And yeah, so that was the coding part. And now I'm going to jump back into my slideshow. And I have some more topics for you. Can you please start? Thank you. So some are goodies I want to talk about are the lints. I slightly touched on already. External files, aliases are really cool. And the Rust talk book. So lints as I said, make sure examples exist or everything is documented. Uh, you can check for broken internal links. So if you have a bigger project with a few developers and someone is refactoring something and you link to it, it gets notified, uh, you get notified in, in the building process because uh, the link is broken and that ensures your documentation is up to date at all places. And you can even if you're, if you just want to document the public API, uh, for example, 
you can check that no public API items are linking to private API items. Then we have aliases. I, I'm a really big fan of the search. I don't know if you noticed, um, but sometimes it's not uh, you, it's not obvious um, that a, uh, a name is not obvious. So for example, you have a struct foo, but um, because of historical reasons, everyone just calls it bar. And for that, you can just use aliases for your struct in this example from the Rust doc book, they use X and big as aliases for big X. So if you're searching for X, all, uh, this struct also shows up. Uh, this is also great for refactoring. So if you're changing things around, you can set the old struct name or function name as an alias and people can still find what they're looking for. Next up, wait, did I skip something? Why is my external files not here? Well, um, then talk about it. Uh, then we'll talk about the Rust book now. Um, the Rust doc book has some more advanced features documented. It has a detailed talk about all the options you have and some references. And I don't know where the external files slide went, but um, I can tell you that you can at the moment use external files, um, even with cargo doc, but you can't use them for the top level comments. So I thought it would be really cool if the big markdown stuff I put on top of my crate was an external file, but that's not, that's not possible at the moment. Um, they are working on it. And that's a really big point uh, because I have, uh, I have a feeling it's a very active um, small community out, uh, around Rustock and uh, they have a lot of open issues and they have a lot of things in a pipeline which are really, really cool, like those external files, which are currently a nightly feature. Um, so I would encourage you to just follow the project a bit on the side or just look at it once. So you know, you, you know what you can expect um, because they have some really cool features planned. Wow, uh, so thanks for listening. Um, here's a link for the Rust doc book. Um, you can hit me up at carledinough.coffee if you want to. You will find a talk and the sources from my other stuff on github.com slash grasegger. I don't have a personal blog at the moment, but if you want to read something by me, I recently blogged about mindfulness uh, on the company blog. Yeah.